Just lift your hands up in his presence. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Something happens when I call you. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Something happens when I call you. Just to call out the name of Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Something happens when we speak His name. No other name is higher than that name. When I call, there's a story of a man who was sitting on the roadside. The Bible says that everybody tried to shut him up. But he said, I know something's going to happen when I call on that name. So even though they tried to keep him quiet, he said, Jesus, he cried, Jesus, 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 oh, son of David, have mercy on me, oh, something happens, something happens, yeah. Something happens when you call on the name of Jesus. Why don't somebody just give him a shout if you believe it? Oh, somebody just give him a shout if you believe it. Thank you, Jesus. 
You may be seated in the presence of God. Yes, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I honor the Lord for his goodness and his mercy toward us. And I honor him for this indeed great man of God. I, I call him a great man of God because I, don't, I, just, I just don't know how many people. I think that um, Pastor Board literally lives by the scripture that says no man take my life. He just, he just won't get sick and die. Just, whenever somebody tells me Pastor Board is sick, I say, all right. God getting ready to show him something else. But you look better than you have in a long time. I honor the Lord. I honor the Lord for a man of faith and power. I learned the faith of God by coming to Pastor Boyd's faith clinics some 20 years ago. It's been a long time. I was a flight attendant and broke. And I used to come to the faith clinics and Pastor Boyd touched me on the shoulder one Sunday and said, little lady, God wants you to come to the faith clinics because he want to teach you some faith. And I started coming to the faith clinics and I learned how to walk by faith and not by sight. My God, I honor God for him and for Mother Boyd. For Mother Boyd, she all the way in the back and I can't hug her. But Mother Boyd, I love you dearly. I love you dearly. And Dr. Johnson, Dr. Johnson, to Elder Boyd, Elder John Boyd, we honor you. Valerie Boyd, we honor you, my God. To all the, the saints of God, for Sister Tanya, who grabbed my neck in the lobby a few weeks ago and said, I have been praying that God would let you come back to Bethel. And she just went straight off in the tongues. <laughs> and I felt the power of God hit me. And I said, well, I, I'm going to come back another time. And she said, no, the Holy Ghost said, you know, I, Sister Tanya, I, I, I told my intercessors, I said, Sister Tanya, don't play Jesus. So you watch Sister Tanya in church when Sister Tanya prays God, God is in the building. She, I people can be jumping all over the sea. Sister Tanya just going to sit there and rock. And when he come in, I said, okay, he in here. And when she quickened and said, I, no, I feel it's the Lord. And I came into the service that night. And here we are doing the will of the Father. Amen. It says it doesn't take somebody having a degree. It doesn't take somebody being called of God in some great calling that we can recognize is to just take somebody that know how to hear God and we thank God for his presence and all of you Dr. Morgan all of you <laughs> Catherine all of you Janelle that are in this building tonight if I missed you by name please don't charge it to my heart charge it to my head mother gathers everybody I love you Get your Bibles if you would. We're going to see why it is that the Lord brought us and gathered us to this place. I'm a firm believer, a very firm believer, especially during this second phase of my life. I am a firm believer that nothing happened by chance. And nothing is just done just for <laughs> nothing is done by chance I can put some more bottom on it and some reverb on the top and bring it from out of the yes 
Yes, into the top a little bit. Yes. Nothing is done by chance or nothing is done because we say that this was the day or the date that God designed for us to be here. I believe completely, completely, in every sense of the word, I believe in a divine moment. I believe that there is nothing that we do, not even, that's if you really, really walk in, in the spirit that the Lord has released in this hour. I don't believe that there is anything that we do, not even going to the grocery store, without the will of the Lord weaving his direction into what we do. Because it is God that determines who, will, who we will meet and why we will meet them. And what would be the purpose of us connecting with them or reconnecting? There are some people that I met many years ago that I will probably never see again. And there are some people that I connected with and, 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 and will not connect with them again. But why did the Lord see fit that we be in this place tonight? All of us, not just gathered by God, but on the calendar date of the Lord. We will see what God is saying. When I went to visit with Pastor Boyd and I walked into his house and I was sitting there in the dining room area and Pastor Boyd walked in and he said to me, he said, after we talked for a minute at the table, he said, I want to, I want to talk to you in my office for a second. So I got up and I went into the office with him. And when I stepped into the office with him, the presence of the Lord was in that, in that small room in, in such a heavy way that I think we both kind of swayed a little bit under the power. He said, God said, uh, he wants you to come and uh, spend three days and three nights in your office upstairs. And, there's going to be some things that God is going to do in you. And when he laid his hands on me, he just kind of grabbed me on both sides of my shoulders and he began to speak in tongues and I almost hit the floor standing there. And when I noticed, I noticed that after I left that office, Something began to transpire in me. Somebody said, well, well, what, is that, what does that really have to do with anything? I, I, when, when I left the Lord, not only waited for the appointed time for me to come back to the office, but the spirit of the Lord began to grab me in a different way. And I had been walking in some things in God and hearing some things that God was, was actually speaking down in my spirit. But, but how many know that sometimes God is trying to say some stuff but you can't really hear him real clear. It's like you're hearing bits and pieces of what God is saying. And then in the midst of that, we are obeying God from a bits and pieces perspective. But when his fullness of time comes, there is something that God will release in the atmosphere where he will put you in a divine moment in a, di uh, in a divine space where you would hear all of what the spirit of the Lord is saying because we have to understand that the reason why I am in this place is because God is saying this is the final quest Now that may not make no difference to some of y'all because, because I said the final quest, the final quest, the final quest, which means this is the end of all cycles, which means everything that the enemy ever thought he was going to do this very night. Oh y'all, the, the, the end of all cycles, final, 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 final coming at the end of a cycle, final, 
final. No, the reason why I had to come all the way back here because this was final. Coming at the end of the series, which means everything that your life has ever walked through, the Holy Ghost said, if you in this place, you didn't just come because a flyer came. You in this place because this is the final night that it all come to end and we all begin to process into the divine. Oh, the divine. Somebody, somebody, somebody said the divine. Somebody said the divine. I got to, I got to, no, no, I got to help us because, because we do a lot of things in the body of Christ, but it's not, it's not the divine purpose. You know, you got people that's preaching, but that's not the divine purpose. Uh -huh. You got people that's singing in the choir, but that's not the divine purpose. We got people that are being complimented by people about what you do in ministry, but you have not kept the divine purpose of God because he does not have your whole heart, your whole heart, your whole, your whole heart. He has your, he has your gift, but he don't have your heart. He has your. He has your talent, but he don't have your whole heart. So that's why when I look around, I get tickled. I get tickled in, in, in these times when I look around because I can look around at the places and, 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 and people where God got their heart. Because them the people that you look at like they're crazy. Oh, what's she jumping up for? Well, what's she running for? No, 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 no. What you don't understand is the reason why I'm jumping up. And the reason why I'm running it is because finally I have kept my divine purpose. No, my worship is not church worship. It's divine worship. It's... it's Thank you, Jesus. 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 Oh, I, feel so, I feel something breaking in here. No, I feel something breaking in here for real. No, 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 because see a lot of y'all, you know what, you know what, Pastor? I was praising God about, about, about two months ago and the Lord said, stop praising me. And I said, God, he said, no, that ain't the praise that I want to give you. He said, that's the praise that the church gave you. I want a breath of real praise in you. And that's why some of y'all, some of y'all waiting to get your praise on. But you better ask God tonight, breath of real praise in me. I'm not talking about a church praise. I'm talking about fire from the inside. What? With the, with the, wait, I got, with the, wait, I gotta go. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be reading from, I'm gonna be reading from, from the book of, book of Ruth. I'm gonna, I'm gonna connect two things together if I can. So just tell your neighbor, you may have to excuse me tonight. Because I, I really did come looking for something. No, no, you're gonna have to excuse me tonight, but I really did. I really, listen, I really am tired of the same old, same old. Uh huh, uh huh. You're gonna have to excuse me tonight because I really did come looking for God to do something in my belly. Michael, you're gonna have to just give me a minute. Just a minute, just a minute. Somebody waiting to praise him because the music is on. But see, but see, if you've been where I've been, you learn to praise him in the kitchen because you ain't even got no organ. No, I'm not hearing nobody. Yo, some, some of y'all waiting to praise him because you're waiting for the piano to play. But if you've been where I've been, you learn how to break through in your basement. And when you come to church, you know that my praise is a real praise based on my experience. My experience. No, my experience. Let me just. So what we, wait a minute, so what we looking at, we looking at when God just said to me now, he arrested me and he said to me, I don't, I don't care if it, I don't care if it is Bethel, I don't care, because that's why I want you to know I'm not here because Pastor Boyd is my spiritual father. Because when God brought me and grabbed me and brought me through these 40 days i had no he said you gotta watch where your feet go 
he said because you can't waste oil in this hour you gotta watch it that you're not that you're not trying to pour but i'm not hearing you you gotta watch it that you're not trying to pour what's divine into something that is flesh you got to watch it that you're not just trying to entertain the people instead of bringing them into divine purpose i'm not hearing y'all talk. you got to you got to be careful uh-huh. oh, show ya. you got to be careful because we are in the end times we're not a in the end times this is the end time this we in it we in it we in it right now we're not we're not we're not getting ready to go into it so so and, and so every day my mind my mind was experiencing something else that i had not experienced before every day my mind was 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 being revealed something about god that i had never seen before so he said to me, let me show you why the enemy never ever wants the true believers to come into purified real worship. I'm not talking about entertainment. Jesus. I'm not talking about entertainment. I'm talking about just a tiny real praise. Real, real, sister gathers. I'm talking about. I'm talking about when it's real, when it's real, because it's connected with something. When somebody said, "Well, you know what? I praise God because because when I holler like that, I travail." But you know what God revealed to me? He said, "Travail is not an act." Travail is an experience of a lifetime. He said travail is what you walk through every day. That it seems like it ain't gonna never break. And he said, and that's the reason why when you get in church, your holler is connected with an experience. And that's why the devil hates you. That's why he don't ever want you to open your mouth. Because the Bible said, when Zion travail, she shall bring forth. Which means every time you give God a praise and you walk in through hell, you birth in something in the kingdom. You, I'm not hearing y'all because because you got too many people asking God take it away God deliver me he said I'm looking for somebody that know how to walk through the power of travail I'm looking I'm looking I'm looking for I'm looking for I'm looking for I'm looking for your holler to match your experience And that's why, and that's why people get touched in church, but they don't get really changed. And I'm talking about change, never to change back. Because God can't find nobody that will let your experience up. Match your holler. That I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing y'all. That'll let the hell that you walk through match what comes out of your mouth. In other words, my praise, it ain't based on what you doing. It ain't based on what you think. It's based on the fact that had it not been for the goodness of, of Jesus, I wouldn't be here. I So why can't we praise? No, no, for real, for real. Can I just, for real? Why do we feel inhibited and intimidated? Everything about me change. I don't. I don't shout the same. I, I don't praise the same. Now y'all ain't saying that. I can't, I can't get nobody. I can't get no. Matter of fact, I shout faster than the music. Can't, can't nobody even. Can't, I, I don't even be paying no attention to the music. Y'all, y'all understand what I'm saying? Because when I hear, when I hear the word going forth, when it hit me, I take my moment. And I don't care if ain't nobody else shouting because one thing I learned is that when I start praising him that watch this dancing mean you done came on the other side of another red sea I'm no 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 shouting for y'all it may mean that I had a good time in church but dancing is supposed to mean that I just dance myself over into another position in God in God in God 
devil, why don't why do what why do the pray say? Why do why why does it take us so long? I'm not talking about church, I'm talking about at home. Everybody in my house. Sometimes they said they go, they go, they gonna need her right there. I just start hollering. The lady came over here the other night. She's uh, from Russia somewhere to give me a massage. And I was just in, in the room hollering. And when I came out, the lady was sitting on the couch like, what in the world? And I said, I'm real sorry, but I just had to get a little breakthrough. I said, I know you don't understand this. Yeah. No, come on, come on, somebody. But every time I hear God talking to me, I just start going, oh, oh, mama, no, I ain't got to be in church. I don't need the piano. I don't need the organ. All I know is that I just had God talking to me. To me. So, so I said, why don't people? Uh-huh. He said, he said, one of the, one of the major things that, that is, that is, that is wrong with us is because this is what he said to me on this consecration. He said, Dr. Morgan, we are experiencing an onslaught attack of the spirit of distraction. No, I said, of the spirit of distraction. And see, you can always tell the people that God is about to step you over into another dimension in him. Because all of a sudden, everything just stopped coming from everywhere. Because the enemy, no, he can't stop what God is about to do. But what he got to do, he got to get your mind going someplace else. Because he knows that if your mind ever connect with the power of God, he knows he's about to be wasted. I'm not hearing you all talk. My God, I got to come on self down. He said, he said, he said, wait, I know. He said. From the, he said, he said, he said, he said, baby, that distraction, Sister Tanya, is the divided attention of an individual or a group from the chosen object of attention on to the source of the distraction of the words. The spirit of distraction come to get your mind off of what God said and on what you going through. Off of what God said. On what y'all, I'm not giving y'all to the, the, the job of the devil is to get your mind off of the chosen object. In other words, he, he, he said, I got to Wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait, pass it, pass it. I said, well, how does that happen? He says, distraction, distraction is the inability to pay attention. You know, have you ever seen people get up and walk out of church and some power can be going and you go, the inability to pay attention. That's why Proverbs 4 and 1 said, my son, I would that you would pay attention that you may gain intelligent comprehension and interpretation, I'm not hearing y'all, of spiritual matters. The reason why the devil don't want you to pay attention to what God is trying to do in your life because you are about to gain on him. You about to, wait, 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 about to, you, the, the inability Wait. When the Lord gave me this, I was driving down the street and I didn't know where I'm just praising God. And a man just came by the car and just gave me the middle finger. And God said, You see that? Because the enemy already know what's happening. Yo, yo, no, no, yo, come on. Come on, you walk in the grocery store and people just slam your change down. You ain't did nothing. No, all of a sudden your kids start acting like they're crazy. And you saying, You ain't never jumped on the couch like this. I'm not hearing y'all. All of a sudden everything just start going crazy. And you said, What is the world that's going on? Because the spirit of destruction knows that whatever the assignment that, that God has given you, He got to get your mind off. Of it because God is about to give you power in it. You're not just going to do it, but you're going to do it with power. Hey. Hey. No, 
the, the lack of. Who am I preaching to right now? No, no, who am I preaching to for real? Come on, I don't care if we don't shout. Who am I preaching to? Who am I preaching to for real? Oh my shot, yeah. my shot. See, that's how you know you're on the right track. That's how you know you done tap something. I don't care what you've been going through. That's how you know God has already set you over in your divine destiny. That's the reason why the spirit of destruction is here. said it's the lack of distraction is the lack of interest wait a minute the lack of interest in the chosen object and that's why 15 minutes after well I ain't gonna give it that long I'm gonna give it to that's why two minutes after the worship team sit down you ain't interested I'm not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. That's the reason why you can't even get your praise on unless you got a cheerleader. Because you really ain't interested in God. No, no. You're interested in people. And that's, and that's why some people are stick their head through the door and say, oh, so and so ain't leading worship. Well, I'm going to hang out here in the hallway till they get through. Because you're not interested in God. I'm, oh, y'all better come over here. I wish I had somebody in here that felt like giving God, the real God, not the God you done made the God. Not the God that you done left. No, the real God. I wish somebody felt like giving the real God. The, the, the real. No, he ain't, he ain't the focus no more. No, he ain't the focus. Y'all, come on. I can't, I can't get nobody to say nothing to me now. Everybody done, everybody done got kind of quiet because oh God, the, the real God. The real God. No, the real God. Catherine, the real God. And so, so when Jesus, when Jesus fasted, watch this. And uh, the Bible said that he, that he hungered. And after 40 days, weariness hit his mind. And Dr. Moon, he got, he got, he got weary in his head. And the enemy came and said something that I have never seen as many times as I have read that scripture. I had never seen this before. When he said that um, we are not interested in the chosen object, that's why we lose focus. I'd never seen this before. Because he does not come. He does not come. And I, I, I really want to help you with this. It ain't Alcohol, none of that stuff. It ain't, it ain't none of that stuff. It ain't, it ain't the people you mad at. It ain't none of that stuff. They not even the enemy. He utilized them and they gone. I'm talking about the real enemy. Because the real enemy ain't cigarettes and the real enemy ain't drugs and the real and I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. Uh, that's not the real enemy. That's not the real enemy. That's not the real enemy because you don't even know what he wanted. We said, he after my life. And the devil, ever, well, first of all, let me help you with something. If you're not a person that's getting ready to be a world changer, if you're not a person that's getting ready to tear his kingdom down, he's not after you. He already has you. And that's why you praise God when you feel like it because you already belong to the kingdom of darkness. And the kingdom of darkness it's not just witchcraft. It's sitting in the church. Hey, Mahaya. Praising God when you feel like it. Hey, it's you trying to control what God does in your life. I don't fall out like that. I don't want to spit like that. I don't want to run like that. I don't want to mess my makeup up. I don't want to get hot. I don't want to get sweaty. No. He's not bringing you horns. He's not bringing you a pitchfork. He's bringing you spit. Your deception. No, spiritual, spiritual deception. What, what, is, what is spiritual deception? He said to him, I never saw this before. He said, I want you, if you bow 
if you just bow down to me, I'll give you. I, I never saw this, Pastor. I didn't even know that all of this existed until he took me and he took me to it and he said, he says, Sister Tanya, in the, in the fourth verse, Dr. Morgan, and the fifth chapter, he said, then the devil took him up to a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the habitable world in a moment of time in the twinkling of an eye. And he said to him, to you I will give all of this power, this power. That's why you got people that are in church that's got power. It ain't Holy Ghost power. Wrong people in power. I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. No, y'all looking at me funny. Y'all because 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 big don't mean blessed. I'm not hearing y'all. Y'all, y'all, come on. Come on. Position don't mean right with God. It when your heart is not broken and contrite, you're the devil's kingdom with God's look-alike power. You ain't got God's power. You got the powers of this habitual king. Now, 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 if he wants to, if he wants to rule, if he wants to rule, let's just, let's just say, let's just say he want to, he want to rule the usher board. If he wants to rule, he finds, and this ain't nobody, because I don't know nobody, I ain't talk, uh, so I ain't, don't put this ain't person. This is a real example. He finds somebody whose heart is unyielded to God. And because there is no resting place, because there is no gray shade in God, either you're in God or you're in the devil, you're not in. Or I'm just over here, ain't I? No, no. If, if God don't totally have your heart, then what you have said to Satan, I am available for your use. So because he know that you are religious, he ain't gonna make you cuss and drink. He gonna bring you and give you a religious position. Uh huh. He go no 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 no. Watch this. Watch this. He said, "I'll give you power. I'll give you authority with excellence, preeminence, intelligence." Which means the devil is not sitting among us stupid anymore. He comes with intelligence. He comes with preeminence. Oh, you can't talk about nothing about the Lord. He knows what you're talking about. Because he's done his homework. Because he knows that this generation is deceived by the hunger for power. Power without brokenness. Power without loving God. Power, oh, y'all. I don't need you to say amen. I came here with one in me already. Power, power, power. I want, I want, I want power. I want, I want, I want authority. I want. No, I can't. Why not? Pre, 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 preeminence. Authority. He said, watch this, watch. He said, I give it to you. I'll give it to you. He told Jesus. I'll give this to you. And the part that struck me, I never saw it before. He said, I'll give it to you if you would worship me just once. I said, huh? I will give it to you if you would worship me just once. I said, God, what? He said, I'll give you all of this if you would worship me just once. Because what I'm really after is not you. I'm after my original self in God. I'm after the position of worship. So I have to give you a position in order to make you give me your life and your worship. So every time, watch this. So every time the Lord tell you to tell me yes and you don't, you just one time hand it to the devil worship. No, I'm not hearing y'all talk back to me. This is, this is no middle vein here. Who am I preaching to? This is no down the middle vein here. For everything that God tells us to do, that we disobey him in, we have just given the enemy our worship. Then we come in the house of God and want to throw our hands up and give God praise and worship God. And so what's happening? A cross breeding in the spirit is going on. And that's why you can't pick up people out from one service to the next. One service you don't pray for God. The next service you don't highly praise God. I'm not hearing y'all. I'm, 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 I'm
I'm not, I'm not hearing you. Nah. Well, I don't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't come for us to, I didn't, I didn't come for us to, I didn't come for us to shout. I didn't, I didn't come for us to shout because our worship is not connected to what we feel. Our worship is not connected to a piano or an organ. Our worship is connected to our surrenderance to God. And when we yield to, wait a minute, wait, because we don't, we don't, we don't want it. We don't, we don't want it. We don't want it because we, we said we want it. And I said, well, how bad? God said to me one day, he said, it's time. He said, the world is in travail for the manifestation of the glory of God in the sons of God. Y'all, the glory of God, uh huh. Mm. the glory of God, which means if we go, if we going to be made manifest, somebody got to see it. I'm not hearing y'all. It wasn't enough for him to call Lazarus forth and say, come back alive. And then he just stood up in the cave, all back in there. And then people peeking at the time, like, he alive because I hear him. No, he had to appear. He had to show himself. I'm not hearing y'all. And the Holy Ghost said, I'm ready to show my glory. I'm ready to reveal my glory. I'm, y'all, I'm ready for the manifestation to come into being. But, but anybody, anybody just can't operate in the manifestation of the glory. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. Uh, can I? No. No, can I have? Can I have five minutes? Let me show you something. Show, I, said, I said, the manifestation of the glory of God. Well, how is the glory of God? How is the glory of God revealed? And we, we said, a glory. Baby, I, we was praising God. And the, a light came on and it just, children that's looking for the spirit of light. Did you see it? It got so bright in the sanctuary. Children that's looking for the spirit of light. Well, how was the Lord? How is his glory manifested? When we look around and we see children that are walking in the roughest hour of their life, choosing to give God praise. Not because they feel it. Not because they see it. Oh, I'm not hearing y'all. But because they trust. They, I don't like what's going on, but I, but I trust you. Because, because what I found out is that when Jesus was dying on the cross, he didn't refuse to give God gl- glory. Don't come because, because he... No, he, he brought me out. You know, we, we shout like that. Touch your, y'all don't just touch your name and tell your name. The Lord brought me out. And then we take off, we take off running. But the manifestation of the glory of God is proven when your praise can come through the fire. And then, and then, no, come on here. Come on here. Because see, we a generation. We don't want to learn a spirit. We just want, we just want God to deliver me, deliver me, break it, God, break it, God. And he's saying some stuff I'm not gonna break. Because there's some stuff I got to teach you. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Some stuff, some stuff I'm not gonna wipe out of your life. Some stuff you're gonna walk through. I'm not no, Sister Tammy's daughter died. God didn't say I'm gonna bring her back, but yet she had to learn how to praise God. I'm not giving the Bible said it is God that gives us the bread of adversity and the water of affliction that we may hear a voice from him saying this is the real way the way you go and it's not the real way he said what are you talking about the real way no I'm, I'm, no, I'm almost done I'm almost done I'm almost done Jesus said what do you want me to do he said worship me one time and when God began to show me Jesus he said I want you to understand, you don't want the glory bad enough. We want propped up positions that makes us look like 
he getting the glory. Now I'm going to come on this side of the church. I lost that side of the church completely. I lost that side completely. You don't put me on the front row. They can't see my glory. No, we want, we want propped up positions that make us look like we got the glory. No, you can sit me in the basement. No, tell me, tell me to stand in the hallway. I, no, I ain't got to have no position in the pulpit. No, after I done came through what I done went through, you ain't got to put me in the choir. You ain't got to put me in the pulpit. You can make me stand out there on the sidewalk, but I'm going to still give God glory out of my belly because my worship is not connected to my status but my travail I'm not hearing nobody y'all better give God a praise it hold on wait a minute I got it he's He said, you don't, I said to him, Dr. Morgan, let me tell you how I, how I got back to Bethel. Let me tell you how I, how I got here tonight. He said to me, I said, he showed me, this ain't, this ain't to you, oh, this ain't me. He said, I was praying one night, Janelle, and I was just seeking the Lord, Catherine, telling the Lord how good he is. Had my worship music on in my prayer room at home, and I was just giving him glory. And you know what he said to me? You done lost my glory. I said, I said wait a minute. No, God, did you? Yo, that's what's not. He said, stop praising me. I said, what are you talking about? He said, everything you do now, you do it with the intent of wanting to get back to some place. Y'all, he ain't talking to y'all. He's just talking to me. So yeah, this ain't, this ain't got to do with none of y'all. It got something to do. Everything we do, we do it. We do it with an intent that we want to just act like we're going after God real hard because what we really want, we want God to just make us famous and we want God to open up a door and we want God to bless us and we want a new house. I'm not hearing you. We want a new car. There's something. No, we got an ulterior motive. <laughs> and listen, when you got an ulterior motive, you get the habitual glory of the kingdoms of darkness. You don't get the glory of God. And that kingdom will let you tell her. Huh? Huh? That kingdom will let you say, the Lord I thank you because he know you ain't never going nowhere in God so I said what are you saying to me this ain't this ain't to y'all this ain't to y'all now I'm closing with this I said what are you saying he said he said don't ever get it confused that's what I love about that's what I love about the God in my life because man don't lie to me since the time your man don't lie to me uh-uh. No, 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 no. Mine don't lie to me. He, he approaches me. I have encounters with the spirit of truth. I'm not hearing y'all. You mean to tell me that the spirit of truth don't never visit you? Everything you do is right. Everything you do is holy. Everything. Oh, I'm not hearing y'all. I'm not hearing you. I'm not hearing you. He said, no. The real righteous will have continuous visitations with the encounter of the spirit of truth about you. That's the spirit that's not afraid to tell you that you arrogant and you stink and you think you something. I'm not giving nobody to talk to me. That's the spirit that'll tell you you ain't nobody if I don't breathe on you. No, oh, the spirit, the real, the real, the real, the real truth. The real truth. Pastor, I stood there. I said, God, what are you saying? He said, don't you ever think that because, and I didn't know no sin I was doing. I was like, well, in my situation, who am I going to stand now? I was like, oh, uh, what? 
I was like Holy Mary Magdalene or somebody, Jesus. If I thought I caught wrong, was like, oh, Lord. And he said, no. He said, I want to help you with something. Don't you ever get it twisted because you can preach and the power of God drops in the building. He said, because I will mount up on you in dimensions of the cry of my people. It ain't got nothing to do with the glory being in you. It's about the glory sitting on you to get the job done. I'm not hearing y'all talk to me. I'm not here. I'm not going to get no amen, Jerry. Ain't nobody going to say amen because, because, because we done got impressed with ourselves. You know, because we can get up and everybody say, oh, the chest was toe up. No, the glory sat on you. The glory ain't in you because when you put the mic down, when you get through preaching, can't nobody find you in prayer. Can't nobody find find you stretched out can't nobody find you broken and full of humility I'm not ain't nobody talking over here so let me go over there because because Catherine they done got quiet back there let me go over here because I didn't come here for a paycheck I didn't come here for money wait a minute let me go on this side no ma'am what kind of posture do you have he said no he said no he said no to uh uh he said it ain't he said, you done, you done, you done lost it for you. Not when you preach it. And you keep having a high time in me on what you do for me. And I want you to have a high time in me when you don't do nothing for me. Yeah, I'm not, y'all, when you in your kitchen, I want the same power to slay you out in the kitchen. I'm not hearing y'all when you driving your car down the street I want you to have to pull over because you ain't got no audience up ain't nobody amen in you ain't nobody waving you down but something in your heart begins to pant after the living God who am I preaching to right now I said okay he said how bad he said how bad do you want it he said how bad do you want it Pastor, he said, how bad do you want it? I said, so Tanya, I said, well, now nah, I know I ain't got it. I want it real bad. I want it real bad. I said, God, forgive me. I got to have it. I said, I got to have it. I got to have your glory in my life, not on my life. Because he said, I can use a jackass. I let my glory sit on a jackass to talk to the prophet. Y'all ain't saying that. He said, I'll sit my glory on whatever I need to sit it on. Come on, somebody. It don't mean that that thing is coming from within you. It doesn't mean that you have a fellowship and a communication. It doesn't mean that you have a direct line with the presence of God when he walks in your temple. It doesn't mean that the ark of God is living on the inside of you that it wakes you up in the middle of the night and the glory fills your room and you don't have a tape recorder going up. You ain't got no music playing. Something is just happening in the atmosphere. So let me let me tell you how I got the Bethel up. And so I said to the time, y'all said, I gotta have this glory. All right, Lord. And he said, All right, let's go. We're going to get it back. I said, All right, I'm ready. Because ain't no shame in my game. I'm ready. I mean, you tell me that I missed it, I tell the world I missed it. All right, let's go. He said, the first thing that you got to understand that I gave you, I gave you three things. I said, what? He said, I gave you a threshing floor. I gave you an offer, an altar. And I gave you a place where I taught you how to worship. He said, now you're doing a whole lot of stuff. And that's good. But I just want you to get that to me. Get away, you worship to me, give it all to me. Give it, get, just, just give it all to me. And when you, listen, y'all ain't saying that. And when you go to church personally for yourself, just don't do nothing unless I move you. Because you just ain't got so into the use of, hallelujah, that you, because now it's you. You say, that's the way I praise God. No, when you praise God, you shouldn't even know how you praise God. Because the spirit ain't the same all the time. I'm, I just said something right there, amen, the whole church. Amen, the whole church. And I'm going to tell you something. If somebody can mock your shout, you've been shouting like that too long. Uh -huh. If somebody can mock your tongues you ain't had a refreshing in a long time if somebody can mock your dance i'm not giving y'all talk back to me the holy ghost ain't danced in you in a while i said okay god all right so what do i have to do he said i want you 
I want you to get back to the threshing floor. And so I said, well, I don't even know how I'm going to do that because I don't even have no relationship with these people no more. I don't even talk to them no more. He said, call them. Mm -mm, this is this is call them. Now I'm prophet is about call them. Now I'm call them. You call them. Well, I don't want nobody to think I need something. You do need something. How bad do you want it? I said, call them. I, I, I said, I said, now, now hear me, hear me, here is, here is, here is, here is still pride. I told my secretary, call them. Call, 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 call them for me. Call them and tell them that, that, that I need to come back to the threshing floor and wake cross, you know, in my place of prayer. Tell, call them and tell them, call them for me. So she called them and she said, they said, you, that, you know, yes. And they, you know, they, they, they was just shocked. And so I got in the car and I, I drove down the highway, passing, and had a couple of cars behind me. And I'm just driving on the way across. And, 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 and Dr. Morgan, I, I got up to the building and, they, and, and I saw Tanya and Rod and, I, and I, I, I embraced them. So good to see you. So good to see you. So good to see you. Church, church embrace. That's the right thing to do. You coming to somebody's. That's the right thing to do when you come into somebody's church or you come into somebody's floor. You come in, you come in because you need something that they got. You're going to be cordial and nice. And so I said, well, okay, I just hugged them. And when, I, when they opened up the door of the threshing floor, John, my robes were still laying there the way they were four years ago. My coffee cup was still sitting on the desk. No, the dust was still there. All of my olive oil bottles on the altar was all dusted. The sheets was on the floor, all dusted. Catherine and the lights was out when I stepped inside that threshing floor God grabbed me by my throat and threw me to the floor he threw me to the floor and I began to howl out of my spirit when I knew one thing I had crawled on my hands and knees I crawled over to sister Tanya I laid my lips on top of her feet I said please forgive me whatever I did I'm sorry but I got to have this floor whatever I Y'all ain't hearing me. How bad do you want it? We don't want it bad enough. I crawled to her brother. I said, please forgive me. I don't know what I did, but whatever it is, I got to have the power that is on this floor. I gotta have it. I gotta have it. I gotta have it. And I want it more than I want to be a prophetess. I just said something right there. No, I want it more than I want to be famous. I'm not hearing y'all. And that's why this go wrong when I start doing the 5 a.m. prayer again. Some of y'all ain't gonna know where to find us because this is not formalism. No, this is not high end. This is how bad do you want to go? How low are you willing to go? How low are you willing? How long are you willing to crawl for it? I crawled the floor and I howled and I crawled and I howled and I crawled all over the floor and he said now get up and clean up this threshing floor get up and clean off the ark of the covenant get up and why are you cleaning it that's what I'm doing in every corner I'm going into places that you didn't even know existed and I started cleaning and when we looked around, a lady came in there to give Sister Tanya a message. Some hours later, she said, ooh. She stepped back outside the door. She said, I was in here a month ago. And what I feel in there now, it wasn't in there. She said, something's in there. She said, what's done happen? I said, my will, my will and my pride is on the, y'all ain't saying nothing. It's on the altar because the only way you can keep the glory of God burning a sacrifice has got to stay on the altar. Y'all not saying nothing. Y'all not saying nothing. And so I was, I was on the floor on my face. And I said, this is it. And God said, this is not it. He said, now you got to go back to Bethel. I said, well, what, where, where I got to go back to Bethel for? It's like, well, I mean, what, what? He said, because I want to take your mind back to something. 
I want to take your mind back to when you was a flight attendant. I want to take your mind back to when you first walked in the church and how Pastor Boyd pointed you out five or six rows from the back. And he said, Little lady right there in that blue suit, I don't know where you come from, but God said, Your best days is ahead of you, and He's going to use you for His glory. And the power of God knocked me out in the seat, and He never laid hands on me. He said, I want to take you back to something. And I said, What God? He said, I want to take you back to the days when you used to run to the front of the church and grab a hold to the poles. Do anybody remember me? Come on, somebody please remember me. I used to grab a hold to the poles and hang on to the altar. He said, your altar is at Bethel. I'm not giving your altar. I'm not giving. I'm not giving. Hashaka, Hashaka. Hey, boss. Y'all better open up your mouth and give God a shot. He said, Bethel is a place where the altar is. I said, Bethel is a place where we grab a hold to the horns of the altar and tell him yes out of our soul. Tell him yes out of our spirit. I came to deliver a word to all of us. He said, get back to the altar. I'm not giving y'all talk to me. He said, the atmosphere is called the altar. He said, every bench is called the altar. He said, the floor is called the altar of God. He said, he said, you used to grab a hole to the altar and, and holler. And he said, they was always having to cover you up because you was just out there. You didn't care who saw you. You had holes in your shoes and you would fall down and the whole side of your shoe would be wide open. You had to shake roaches out of your clothes to come to church. Y'all ain't saying that. But then we get up and we got more than one outfit to wear and we don't want the altar now. Pastor Boyd said come to the altar on Sundays and some of y'all with your arrogant self will come down here clapping your hands like Lord I thank you and waiting for the power to fall. I'm not hearing you. I'm not, no, I'm not hearing nobody talk to me in here because I want to know where is your brokenness. I want to know where is your heart. No, I got to, I got to say this and I am finished. I started reading. I started reading the book of Ruth. And when it got to the book of Ruth, the Bible said, and I'm, I'm going to just drop this nugget, and I'm going to pick this up tomorrow, John. It said, it said, when Ruth came to Naomi, she said to, this is how I was when I came here. I was from, y'all, come on now. I ain't know nothing about no faith. I ain't know nothing about no faith. All I know is that you're just waiting there. If the quickening hit, the whole church where I came from, they just, everybody just quicken. And everybody just, I shout over side, yeah, 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 that's yeah. And that's it. You know, and then everybody shout, everybody shout. I ain't know nothing about travailing and pressing in the prayer. And, and I, I didn't know nothing about no, oh, I didn't know nothing about that. I didn't know nothing about nobody handing me no microphone and say pray one hour and you better not pray in tongues because I want to hear what's being prayed out your spirit. Ain't nobody ever told me that but pastor. I'm not here. I didn't know nothing about praying before we walked in this building and it was almost below zero and it wasn't nothing but rocks and he handed me the microphone and said pray and I had mittens on praying and couldn't speak in tongues for an hour and almost fainted and every time I walked by him and felt like I was going to faint he hit me in my back and said keep going. I didn't know nothing about it. me asking and pastor well why you you gonna hurt us well I just don't you think it's dangerous to have us out here praying like this he said no because some places God gonna take you they're not gonna have air conditioning some place God gonna take you they're not gonna have heat how about I'm not here he said you got to learn how to bring the power down in season and out of season I'm not hearing y'all you done got up in here and let somebody change you you done got up here and you think this is just a worship center but this is a place of power and prayer I said, wait. I said, I didn't know nothing about that. I didn't know nothing about that. I didn't know nothing about faith. I didn't know nothing about learning faith. And watch this. By the time he got through teaching it to me, I still didn't have it real good. Now, y'all, but, but the Lord said, I want to take you to the book of Ruth because this is going to help you. 
everybody in here, this is going to help you. This is going to help you. It's going to help you, and it's going to help you to know me a little bit better. Because I'm not visiting. I'm home. I'm, I'm not here to... That's why I don't care if you don't shout. I'm not visiting. I, I will be doing this many times. No, y'all ain't saying nothing. Y'all ain't saying, no, I'm not a visitor. No, I came back to get in touch with my altar too. No, no, you can sit there and act like you don't need one. I'm not giving nobody. But God got a way of letting something hit your life that'll bring you to the point that you would cry out to God on the altar. I'm going to leave this. This is why people say, well, well, why you don't think? You know, people call me and say, well, how you doing? And I heard that uh, you done made it through your trial. And I was like, but, but it, ain't, it ain't that I don't want to be with you. This is what it is. He took me to Ruth. And Ruth walked up to Naomi, Sister Tanya. That's why today I appreciate you. Ruth said, um, can I paraphrase? Who said, I'm not saved. I don't know Jesus. I came from a family. They live somewhere else. Husband's dead. I ain't got nothing. But your God 